Ah, it's a lovely day for a boat ride in the swamp. If not for these mosquitoes, then today would be perfect. But for some reason, the mosquitoes keep getting bigger the further you go into the swamp. They started out as tiny, almost invisible insects, and can now be the size of your thumb. You can hear their buzzing as they whiz past you. You go deeper to investigate why they're so big. Eventually, you see a large cluster of mosquitoes the size of your hand buzzing around. They notice you and start flying toward you. You grab a branch and start swatting them away. You run back to your boat and try to escape, but they follow you and some manage to land on you. You swat them away, but more mosquitoes pop out of nowhere the size of a basketball. You start your boat and speed your way back to the mainland. As you arrive, you see everyone running away in a frenzy, panicking because of the giant mosquitoes. Some of them are as big as a large dog. People are ducking under picnic tables, while some are running back to their cars and driving away. You get off the boat and run toward the closest grocery store, along with dozens of people. The employees lock up the gates, but the large glass panels show the mosquitoes multiplying. They're getting bigger and bigger until you can see one as big as a car zipping by. It's so strong that it landed on an empty car and crushed it. Everyone inside is ducking away out of fear. You try to calm everyone down and not make any noise. The mosquitoes are landing on the glass panel, blocking out the natural light. It's getting dark inside. Someone turns up the volume on the TV to the breaking news. Mosquitoes are flying rampant all across the continent, destroying natural resources and infiltrating cities. People are advised to stay indoors until further notice. The mosquitoes notice that there are people in the store, so they try to get in by force. A car-sized mosquito flies around in the sky, unaware of what's happening below. Everyone hears some noise coming from the back room. The employees realize they didn't lock the doors. A large mosquito enters and knocks down everything. Everyone runs around in a panic while throwing random stuff at it. Some people grab a fire extinguisher and spray it until it flies to the back room. Some employees lock the door and barricade it so that nothing can enter. Everyone waits nervously. The TV broadcasts some live coverage of how giant mosquitoes are flying everywhere. A helicopter is forced to land because the mosquitoes are flying around wildly in the skies. Everyone shudders when they hear the sound of more mosquitoes buzzing around near the back door. Hours pass and more mosquitoes keep coming endlessly. There are no people outside and much of the urban and landscape design in the park is destroyed or overrun by giant insects. Some people eat whatever is available, while some are sleeping. A piece of breaking news interrupts the live coverage and shows that there will be armored buses ready to pick up people near the picnic site. However, the buses won't drive to hot spots since it'll be too dangerous. The only way to get on them is by being on the highway in two hours. Everyone tries to call their loved ones, but the cell towers have been knocked down and no one can call anyone. The mosquito that broke in a while ago destroyed the only landline that was present. People are arguing about whether they should stay or go. More insects cover the only clear patches of the sky until the sun disappears. The people split into two parties, those who are leaving to catch the bus and those who want to stay. The employees know a back way that can quickly lead to the highway. The only problem is that it'll take around 20 minutes on foot and there are no cars to use. The way is tricky. First, they would need to escape through the main entrance and head through the bushy forest behind the dumpsters. Over there, they can enter a building, possibly through the sewers, which will lead to the lake next to the highway. The first party decides to leave. They prepare supplies for the breakout. Every second, more mosquitoes arrive, covering the sky. They gear up with anything they can find to protect themselves. Mosquitoes are attracted to the carbon dioxide that people breathe out and they know that there's a source coming from the grocery store. Once everyone is ready, they get some makeshift torches and light them up. They add some barbecue fuel to keep the fire going. You're part of the party that is planning to escape. The doors open and everyone makes a break for it behind the dumpster. Many mosquitoes try to attack you, but the smoke from the fire repels them. Every second, more mosquitoes are filling the sky and the environment. Many people end up running back into the store since they couldn't make it past the dumpster to the other building. Eventually, the rest of the people, including yourself, run toward the building. 
But it's locked, and no one can break down the door. Plan B is to break the glass mm. from a window and crawl inside. You grab a rock and smash the closest window. The only problem is that the mosquitoes can follow you inside. So without any options left, you pull through and run to the basement of the building to find the entrance to the sewer. Success! You found it, and everyone descends to the bottom. No mosquitoes in sight, just rats. You're walking knee-high in sewer water with it flowing past you, but it's only a few minutes until you reach the river. Another problem is that the sewer isn't going to the lake, but somewhere deep into the sewer channels. You follow it until you see what looks like an outlet. You make it out and are near a water hole where all the discarded sewage leads next to the swamp. The only problem is that you're not next to the highway anymore, and time is running out. More mosquitoes are swarming the air, but they don't bother buzzing next to you. You notice some cat-sized creatures floating on the water. These are baby mosquitoes, or the larva, and they're coming your way. You and everyone else swim for your lives to the shore. The giant alpha mosquito soars into the air and swoops down to try and grab someone, but it misses. Everyone makes it to the thick, swampy area where no giant mosquitoes can enter. Everyone covers themselves with branches to protect themselves. 15 minutes until the armored bus arrives. Since the mosquitoes can't enter, this will be the best place to hide until then. Darkness falls, and still, no bus! It's been three hours, and nothing! The mosquitoes are still buzzing around, and everyone is getting uncomfortable under the thick bushes. After a while, everyone hears a roaring engine and sees lights flashing on the highway. Everyone gets up and runs to the bus, but you stop them to not draw the mosquitoes' attention. You volunteer to sneak out and stop the bus, and then everyone else can follow without drawing too much attention. You move a couple of branches, step over some tree bark, and crawl to the highway. You try to hold your breath so that you won't make any heavy breathing sounds. You reach the side of the road and wave your arms to stop the bus. It pulls over and the door opens. You signal the rest of the people to follow and they follow your lead. Everyone is inside and safe. You're sitting in a car in a space shopping mall parking lot. You've just bought a gift for your sister's birthday and should have time to get it to the celebration. Today, there are a lot of people in the mall, so it's difficult to leave the parking lot. Finally, you're approaching the gate. You press the button next to the steering wheel and activate the gravity cushion. It allows the car to hover above the ground at several inches. The car wheels are sliding inside the body, and a huge turbine is coming out of the trunk. The front glass becomes a touch panel with many buttons and screens. The gate opens, the turbine releases a flame, and your car flies out of the parking lot right into outer space. Thousands of flying cars are rushing past you on an invisible space highway. You're moving away from the mall, which looks like a huge space station surrounded by holograms of advertising brands. Before Earth, you need to get to Mars. There, you want to repair the car's engine. The navigator plans a route to the red planet, and you go on your way. You're far from Earth's orbit, so you can get to Mars in several hours. You activate the autopilot and decide to take a little nap. It's 2048. The world's population has exceeded 20 billion people. There's too little space on Earth. Humanity is not ready to colonize other planets yet. So scientists and engineers from all countries start building huge space stations. This unloads the planet by more than 50%. The stations look like huge rings. They imitate the Earth's atmosphere have artificial gravity and vegetation. People move to stations, but often return to Earth. Rockets fly between the planet and orbit, but such transport is expensive and inconvenient. Automakers make efforts at creating super reactive flying cars. Some years later, people slowly colonize the Moon and Mars. Now getting to the red planet is as easy as getting to the neighboring city. Cars fly along certain routes that are similar to airways for planes. Engineers create special digital highways that can only be seen through the windshield. Of course, you can fly through space as you like in any direction, but if you fly to a mall or the moon, you have to stick to the established digital route. You wake up and approach Mars. People almost don't live here because of the unfavorable atmosphere and difficult weather conditions. 
but Mars has the biggest service center for cars and the coolest amusement theme park in the solar system. To get there, people have to stand in a space traffic jam for hours. The dashboard shows you have some problems with the turbine. You put on a spacesuit, take a laser screwdriver, and get out of the car. You're in zero gravity, flying up to the turbine and fixing the problem with the screwdriver. There are thousands of cars around you. People are yawning inside, listening to music, and watching movies. You get into the vehicle and slowly move on. The engine or turbine often fails in the middle of a space highway. When this happens, your car activates its emergency mode. The dashboard automatically sends a signal to the nearest repair team. You're just floating in space and waiting until the mechanics arrive. They tow the car to the nearest auto service. You have enough oxygen inside for a couple of days. And if you run out of it, you can ask for help on the internet. Good people flying by will stop and share their oxygen supplies with you. Finally, you get to the car service station. Mechanics install a new super jet engine for your car and repair the turbine. There's not much time left and you promised your sister you wouldn't be late. You get into the car and leave the Martian orbit at full speed. The new engine runs silently and doesn't shake the car. You increase the speed and fly along an almost empty digital highway. On your way, you meet a lot of small satellites showing holographic ads. Fortunately, you have an ad blocker. You turn it on and the space banners become invisible through your windshield. Finally, you see a small blue dot. This is Earth. At this moment, you remember that you need to feed your dog. You leave the route and fly to the moon. There you have a small cottage with a house, which you bought for a small price last year. People can't change the atmosphere of entire planets yet, but you can install a small dome and fill it with oxygen. Inside your dome, you've built a house, a swimming pool, and even a small vegetable garden. In the past, people went to the countryside to take a break from the city bustle. Now, everyone just buys houses on the moon. You fly through the dome, land on the white surface, and put food into a dog bowl. They're renovating your apartment on the space ring, so you live on the moon with your dog for a while. You can see other cars flying up into the neighboring domes. Some vehicles are elite supercars with a large gravity cushion and ultra-reactive engines. They can fly 10 times faster than the speed of sound and have artificial intelligence that can talk to the driver. There are also old, rusty space cars. Sometimes people attach a jet engine to an ordinary car and cover the body with a mix of copper, iron, and silver to travel over long distances in a cold vacuum. You can also see a lot of taxis in outer space. Sometimes getting to the moon is cheaper than getting to the other end of some city on Earth. The reason is traffic jams on the Earth's roads. Also, there are a lot of flying buses in space. Every day, several flights depart on the Earth to Moon to Mars route. People are constantly building something on Mars. The huge car service and the amusement park are done. Now they're creating a scientific center there to study interstellar jumps. Of course, engineers need building materials for such construction projects. Several times a week, long trains fly from Earth to Mars along a separate space route. Initially, Trains carried people, but they became unprofitable. It's much cheaper and faster to get to Mars by your own car or bus. You're walking through the park with your lovely little poodle. You throw the ball. The pet runs after it and brings it back. You throw again, and he's running happily. Then he stops. The poodle freezes, shivers, then turns around and looks at you. Get it, Snowball? but he doesn't listen. Then, you approach the ball, pick it up, and look at the dog. Snowball stares at you with a piercing look. You throw the ball next to him. Snowball, take it! The dog puts his paw on the ball, then slowly shakes his head as a sign of refusal. You're a little scared and look around. You notice some other people in the park also have problems with their pets. Some dogs are barking at their owners. Others are running around. Your poodle looks at you like you've done something bad. Then it goes away. You're running after Snowball, asking him to come back. You leave the park and find yourself on the road. You can hear the creaking of tires nearby. Several people are running in your direction. They're scared. 
You try to ask them what's happened, but after a second, you understand it yourself. Several elephants, zebras, lions, and gorillas are moving along the road. They jump on cars, demolish hydrants, knock people off their feet. Elephants are screaming through their trunks. When they run past you, you notice penguins sitting on the back of these huge animals. You don't forget about Snowball and decide to find your dog. You're wandering through the streets, meeting other people who lost their pets too. You've got a lot of messages on your phone. Your friends are asking you to check the news. You go online and see that all over the world, animals' behavior has become strange. You can see footage of a panda getting into someone's car and driving away. Another video captured several wolves standing in line at the supermarket. Chimpanzees are running out of a store with packs of books. In another video, several seals push a fisher out of his boat. Three waiters are sitting in the corner of a restaurant while lions are walking around them and roaring. One of these animals puts its paw on the menu. It looks like it wants to order some food. You don't notice a giraffe standing next to you. It bows its head and is also watching the video on your phone. You scream and run away. You approach your house and see Snowball. Your pet is surrounded by several stray cats and dogs. Looks like they're communicating with each other. They notice you and immediately run in different directions. You get into the house with Snowball. Cook your lunch and pour dry food into his bowl. Snowball refuses to eat those crunchy meatballs. He points his paw at your plate and jumps on a chair and waits for you to serve him a normal meal. It's all strange, but you give him your food and sit down next to the dog. After lunch, the dog runs into the living room and sits near the wardrobe. You open it. Snowball points at the second shelf with his nose. There's some blank paper there. You put one sheet on the floor. Snowball jumps onto the table and takes a pen with his mouth. The dog's holding it with his teeth and drawing something on the paper. After five minutes, you look at the drawing and realize that it's a crooked, incomprehensible inscription. And it says, from now, I understand everything. You look at the poodle and he nods. From this moment on, the lives of all people on the planet are changing. Your pet isn't the only one who has become sentient. All the mammals in the world are now as intelligent as humans. Dogs no longer walk the streets on leashes. Many pets run away from their owners and never come back. Others stay in houses and apartments, but only under certain conditions. Any pet has to eat the same food as their owner, sleep on a separate bed, choose TV shows to watch, and walk out when they want. Scientists around the world offer animals a chance to pass intelligence tests. Zebras pound out some famous melodies with their hooves. Gorillas are excellent at drawing and writing. Bulls draw geometric shapes on the sand with their horns. As soon as people realize the animals are smart, they decide to release all the mammals from captivity. Pigs, sheep, cows, and other farm animals escape from farms and pastures. They want to be free. Meat products are disappearing from all stores. Milk production slows down because not every cow wants to share it with people. Animals get freedom, but it isn't enough. They want to say something important, but they can't because their vocal cords are not capable of it. To solve this problem, scientists create a collar that reads an animal's brain activity and turns their thoughts into words. Now mammals can speak with robot voices. A million wild and domestic animals come out of forests and the jungle all around the world. Reporters gather around them with cameras. A llama with a collar approaches the microphone. It declares the planet belongs not only to people, but to animals as well. From now on, people are prohibited from harming nature. If they violate the agreement, the animals will begin to take over the cities. A 500-page act is signed. The terms of the agreement are written in detail. Some of the animals move to the forests and jungles. 
but some mammals want to live in a comfortable urban environment. Several years pass. Animals and people are getting used to a new way of life. Every mammal living with humans now wears a speech collar. This allows them not only to communicate with humans, but also to become full-fledged society members. It's night. A strong storm begins. You live in a coastal town and watch the raging sea through the window. Lightning strikes through the sky. Huge waves crash against the shore, and a downpour turns the sand into wet clay. In the morning, a lot of fish are going to be washed ashore, you think, and go to bed. It's some strange noise that wakes you up. It's like hundreds of thousands of hands clapping near your window. You go outside and see a huge crowd of people standing by the sea. The popping sound is getting louder, and its source is tons of fish washed ashore. They've been here for several hours, but are still alive. They kick and beat their slippery bodies against the sand. You see carp, trout, sardines, and even a few huge great white sharks. They are full of energy, snapping their big toothy jaws. Somehow, all fish can now breathe air like humans. You help other people throw the fish back into the water. You can see them swim away into the sea depths, but some of them come up and swim close to the surface, enjoying fresh air. You've helped almost all the fish, except for the sharks. A rescue crane arrives. It lifts each of the sharks by its tail, one by one, then carries the fish toward the sea and lets it go. From the news, you learn that air-breathing fish have been washed ashore not only in your city. People find them on beaches all over the world. Scientists and marine researchers have already gone on a sea expedition to study this unique phenomenon. Later in the evening, they announce the results of their study. Now, every sea creature that has gills can also breathe through newly developed lungs. They can stay on land for as long as they want. They only need to have some water to drink, just like other living creatures. Fish absorb water and pass it through their gills. The gills have special receptors that draw the air out of the water and send it to the fish's bloodstream. This way, their bodies receive doses of oxygen needed for life. After this, carbon dioxide is formed. It enters the fish's blood, then passes through the gills and is released back into the water. The ability to breathe through gills has remained unchanged, but the anatomy of these creatures is different now. They've developed lungs and a respiratory tract. When a fish is in the water, it closes this tract and blocks access to the lungs. This way, water doesn't get there. But when the fish is on the surface, it closes its gills and opens access to the lungs through the mouth. This amazing metamorphosis doesn't bring significant changes to the world, yet. Dolphins and whales have always had lungs. Air passes through their nostrils, which are located on the top of their heads. This opening is called the blowhole. Dolphins come up to the surface, fill their lungs with air, and go under the water for a few minutes again. Now, not only dolphins, but also all the other sea creatures swim close to the surface. You take a boat to go on a sea trip and see the shocking phenomenon with your own eyes. The further you get from the shore, the more fish you notice in the water. They jump out high and dive back in like dolphins. They seem to be enjoying their new ability. There are so many of them. Several dozen fish jump into your boat. You throw them back into the sea. You see a huge fin and turn off the engine. A shark is swimming a few hundred feet away from you. It's about the size of your boat. Fortunately, it's distracted by other fish and is not going to hunt you. You turn around and go back to the shore. Dusk is falling. You can see city lights. The sea is filled with glowing jellyfish and phytoplankton. Because of this, the water is gleaming purple and blue. You're fascinated by this sight and don't notice the lights of the town suddenly turn off. You can hear people screaming. The closer you get to the shore, the louder the screams and sounds of something getting crushed. Finally, you arrive at the pier, get out of the boat, and find that a part of the embankment has been ruined. Boats are overturned, streetlights are broken, electrical wires are torn. A long trail of transparent, viscous liquid leads from the pier to the town. You slip on this slime once or twice. The streets are empty. 
Cars are abandoned, windows and houses are broken, there's garbage everywhere, and the road is also covered with ooze. You hear some kind of popping sound coming from a dark alley. It's approaching you. A small octopus appears on the road. It's moving in a spider-like manner. With the help of its tentacles, the creature climbs a car, jumps onto the wall, and crawls up. After this octopus, another one comes out. Several squid follow it. Some of them are clumsily crawling towards you. You take a step back. More and more squid and octopuses appear out of the dark alley. Some of them reach the size of a car. You see a bicycle lying on the ground and get on it. You're traveling through deserted streets with an army of octopuses crawling behind you. The ground starts shaking under the wheels of your bike. You hear a deafening roar of an unknown beast. You look back and immediately regret doing it. A huge monster, the size of a five-story building and similar to a squid, breaks the wall of the nearest house with one hit of its colossal tentacle. The creature has come out of the darkest corner of the sea. Ever since the animal got a pair of lungs, it's been looking forward to taking a breath of fresh, clean air. Instincts brought it to the surface, where it smelled a lot of food. The city lights attracted the Kraken's attention. With its huge tentacles, the Kraken clings to the walls of buildings and the road and catches up with you. You see a tunnel straight ahead. You push the pedals of your bike as hard as you can and manage to get inside. But then you hear a strange sound behind your back. The Kraken, like an octopus, doesn't have an internal skeleton. Its body consists of muscles. That's why it can squeeze into any hole, like a liquid. The Kraken is chasing you in the tunnel, like a snake with dozens of tails. But its speed is slowing down. You accelerate and get out of the tunnel. Frightened, you travel as fast as you can and reach the nearest city by morning. Here you meet your neighbors and learn that sea monsters unexpectedly appeared in coastal cities all over the world. Fortunately, they don't stay on land for long. They've been living in the cold ocean depths for years, and their skin can't withstand sunlight. At dawn, the monsters return to the water. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.